Hello everybody and welcome to Dead Zone. This is a game that's been on my wish list for a little while and there is now a demo available, which is what I am playing. If you would like to play this demo yourself, go to the Steam page for it, which is linked in the description of this video and go check out the demo. But we're gonna be running through. So this is a game that's been on my watch list for a while. It's been on my wish list on Steam for quite a while. And also uh, I've just been kind of keeping an eye on the developer. The developer for this game has put out several games in the past, most of them kind of in the platformer E Metroidvania E kind of style with gun. Uh, I think they also put out a top-down shooter at one point. Most of their games, from what I can tell, run in Game Maker, and they all have a very distinct style, as you will probably notice quite quickly from this video. This game, however, is a turn-based tr traditional roguelike kind of... I, well, playing this, I, it kind of feels like this dev played a bunch of Caves of Cud. I'm not entirely certain that's true, but that's what this feels like. It's got a bit of an odd control scheme, but the game itself seems quite neat. So, uh, if you, once again, if you want to check this out yourself, I recommend just go downloading the demo for yourself and giving it a playthrough, but... Hopefully this video will kind of give you the basics. Uh, the This demo available has uh, three different places that we can start. Uh, six sectors... Late layer of the beast, six sectors down. A fistful of creature and feature. Uh, Twelve sectors down, knee deep in the rag of scav filth. We'll just be starting from the beginning. And eighteen sectors down, what cursed nightmare awaits. This game very much feels like a drug trip in the best kind of way. And that's what I like from this style of game. But before we actually dive in, um, I just want to show you the controls. Um, so the controls are a little bit weird. Um, it's WASD for movement, and you can hold down shift to uh, do your directional movements. So to hold down shift, uh, hitting W and A will take you up left. Uh, hitting W and D will take you up right. Uh, same for down and whatnot. However, the game has air quotes advanced controls over here where I can use um, your cardinal directions. Now that's your defaults, but if you click these, you can actually set it just so that you use your uh, numpad for movement and then completely ignore everything. However, there is a reason as to why you don't want to do this. This game really wants you to use the mouse for things. There's no way to open doors and certain other things and interact with large parts of the world without the mouse. I, I really, really wish that this wasn't the case because I don't like using WASD for cardinal movement. That system of using the map like swapping back and forth just doesn't feel good so the way i'm going to be playing this i'm going to be playing this mostly with my right hand i'm going to be playing it with the uh full uh directional movement on the numpad and then grabbing the mouse to do certain actions on the screen what i would love to see for the full release of this is let us hit t or some other button um and then move that around with the numpad to then select and interact with things in the environment also give us access to things like E as an action key. Uh, currently, this just feels very limited in my options for control uh, for a traditional roguelike. So that's kind of something I just wanted to get out of the way right at the start. Uh, as for general options, uh, you have your full screen, your, your music, um, and then mouse move on or off, which I can turn off, um, which I'm going to turn off because I don't want to accidentally move myself. Uh, the game does have CRT effects, which are off by default, which is quite nice. And you've got Boomer, which is like your minimal CRT effects, and Matt ma 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 whatever that word says. Um, angry boomer i guess for the full-on effect um so i've got mouse movement off and all that but the game's still gonna want me to use the mouse for certain things so let's just jump in we do have a couple of different classes for starters the one that i've messed around with the most would be the bounty hunter uh but there there's bounty hunter which is uh like well you can see the stats over on the left which has um how, how do i explain this um they, they, they all just, it's varying starting gear and varying starting stats. The Bounty Hunter seems to be the easiest start for a complete noob, which is what I've been playing. Uh, they they say, so let's let's read some, some lore. <clears throat> they say something foul lurks in the Nestrum bowels. Whole outholes have gone silent and swallowed by silence that remained of life where, they, where the half-chewed corpses. Six sectors down, a fistful of creature feature. Time for a spot of the past con of pest control. So we, we, we dive in and uh, we end up in the park zone. Ah, so you breathe in the deep lungfuls of the relatively clean air that breezes over you. Flora flourishes in the recreational zone. A welcome respite 
but the stench of dried bloodied death lingers in the mellow falling leaves. And here we are. So I've turned off mouse movement, so I can't move with the mouse, but we can move around here with our nice uh, numpad key. So this is kind of your your, your base uh, like game of what the game looks like. If you hit tab, you can get your quick uh, mini map. I kind of wish that this was a solid mini map, but it does kind of get the, the job done. A solid mini map would, would be a lot nicer basically not having the uh, background graphics here. If I hit space, uh, we can see our inventory, our ammo, weapons, device, gear, and then miscellaneous, as well as our character profile. This shows our skills. We start with the bounty hunter skills, which is a f nice fat rag scav bounty. We'll uh, roam each sector. Basically, a bounty, uh, when you kill it, you, you, you get extra credit. Well, as it says there, each uh, will net extra credits. So I get extra money for killing a specific creature on each floor. Um, we also have uh, bodge and all of our recipes. So these are things that we could craft if we get uh, the necessary items. So if you get a spud ball bat and amp rock packs, uh, you can craft a shock baton. Uh, if you get a laze pistol and plasma capsules, you can make a mini laze blaster. So as you're seeing this, uh, I'm going to come into another criticism. Um, also, here's the better map. I'm going to pop into another criticism. I want the ability to just have a nice font so this game has a very set style and i you can see just by looking at it i mean look at this thing it's very very clear that this game and its developer has a very specific aesthetic they are going for with this however um this type of font gets difficult to read very quickly for me and i know i'm not alone in this opinion on these pixel fonts uh i would love to see the option to use um uh, Maybe not even necessarily a huge list of fonts. I would say one dyslexic friendly font and then one just plain simple smooth font for people like me uh, because this will limit the amount of time that I am able to play this game for because of eye strain issues. Um, that being said, aside from that, the UI seems pretty straightforward and usable for a traditional roguelike. I just would really, really, really like to see font options. Uh, a good recent example of a game with great font options is Loop Hero, where they had their super stylized, beautiful font um, for the game by default, but they also just immediately let you turn that off. So that that is my, my big request off the get-go. So we do have a, a duty up, a dude up here that we need to deal with. But, um, so to swap between weapons, you can either uh, hit the uh, one, two, one through four keys on your keyboard, or you can simply click them. Weapons can jam and do need to be reloaded. Uh, we have a shout button to summon things over. We also have a sneak button. This one hasn't noticed me yet, so we can actually probably just sneak away here. Um, as we move around, there are certain objects in the environment that are interactable. However, they're not immediately clear. Um, this door here, and this is why I say I would like more keyboard-specific abilities, um, even with mouse movement turned off, I do still have to click these doors to move through them. So I, I would like um, the ability to move through doors without taking my hand off the keyboard, if possible. But not not necessary. It's just one of those like little nitpicky control things as somebody who plays a lot of these. There's a chest up here, and there's also a dude right in front of me. So I do have the shotgun. We're just going to kill you, which then notifies that slime over there behind me. I'm going to reload the shotgun and move a few tiles to the left. I'm actually going to take this opportunity to uh, check the supply crate right after I deal with you. We do have two shots in the shotgun. I need to reload it now. However, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to reload the shotgun, swap to the knife, and then stab it with the knife. Didn't kill it. Stab it again. Stab it again. So you do have to worry about things like bleeding, and then we get our um, our, our uh, top side thing. So we're immediately going to start getting bandages. Bandages are very important because bleed can and will easily kill you. Uh, food rations are also helpful for just like healing back HP. Um, and so like the first run I did of this, I died of an infection. Just to give you an idea, uh, this this game definitely wants you to be messing with these chests and uh, interacting with them. Uh, we do also have our, uh, up in here in the profile, we also have our status effects, which will tell you if you're bleeding or injured or poisoned. And then over here, you have your stats, which will tell you your kills and the number of turns and all that jazz. Um, then there's uh, the the things that I can currently craft. So I can actually make a super shotgun, I think. Yep. We bodged together a super shotty. Let's just uh, jump into the inventory because it's actually um, un- wielded that, I guess. So I, I need to put this into my inventory. So we're going to put that under three. So because of the items that I picked up in there, jumping into the crafting screen, I was able to bodge together 
uh, an item. So it will just show them as available, but you can also just look at the all recipes that you have available at the time. And uh, let's get back to moving around. So we did take a little bit of damage there. This bat has seen us. Let's try with the sh super shoddy, shall we? Ooh, and he dodged it, of course. Go figure. <laughs> and we missed. Yeah. The reload. That's a disappoint. Took quite a bit of damage there. Um, I'm gonna... How much does the meals heal? 20 health? I need to take another 5 damage before that's quite worth it. We can take a breather. I'm gonna go back to sneaking. We do move a little slower while sneaking, but... Hmm. Man, I really wish they were sitting around an exploding barrel or something over there, because those dudes are scary up top. Go this way. It's very much a run away unless you have to game, at least from the little bits that I've played. I'm gonna move up north a little bit. And that. See what I mean by I, I really wish that I didn't need to constantly have to be swapping between different control schemes. Just let me, like, do everything with the mouse. Or with the keyboard, rather. Um, so the super shotgun jammed. So that's going to take a turn to unjam. But I can't do it while there's enemies yeah, on the screen. So if there's enemies on the screen, I can't unjam it. Let's go after this snake with the knife. This might poison us. I think we're good. All right, let's unjam the super shotgun and reload her. We only have four bullets left, so a little bit short on uh, things for the super shoddy. Let's go up to this chest over here. We got there's a laser pistol and a combat combat blade. I'm just gonna grab everything in here. I'm gonna just do that until our inventory is full, and then we'll worry about what we've got. So I got the combat blade. Is that just a better knife? It looks like a better knife. Let's go into Bodge. Do we have anything available? Nope, we don't. I think I might just drop that knife. So the, the, the combat blade just seems to be like a better version of the knife, just kind of all in all. Um. So I also have this um, laser pistol, which we could probably swap out for the pistol ear. Um, and it also has the reliable tag, which is good. Note when you uh, equip a new weapon, it starts off unloaded, so you will need to reload it like right away. But I only have six shots of that thing, so I kind of got to be careful. Um, so now we are right up and in these guys' face. I do have the combat blade. And we immediately get a level up. By the way, shout out to this level up screen. Super satisfying sounding and doesn't scare me. Um, so these are all the stat boosts that we're getting as part of the level. And we get to choose a skill, which is basically just a perk. So I can get second wind. Come on. You can make it. You ain't giving up now. You gain 20 max health and become fully healed. So that's helpful right now. Uh, if you skedaddle, uh, if you are running and an enemy shoots you, then you have a 66% chance of dodging the attack. If an enemy spots you, but in but you instantly move out of its sight, and then it won't be alerted by you. That's an interesting one. I think I'm going to take second win right now, because the extra HP is just useful, because we're about to be going into a fight. So let's swap over this super shoddy, take you out, and then I think swap back to the knife. I'm going to wait a turn for him to come up to me. And I missed, of course. Go figure. And then just kill him. Perfect. Let's move up a little bit. So we still have quite a bit of carry space, so I'm just going to grab what I can. Check the map. This kind of intro sector, I, I just kind of want to... Ooh. All right, that's my, that's my bounty, I think. I'm going to swap over to the laser pistol. And it jams. Go figure. Got to you. This guy, this bounty, is strong and can kill me in, like, four shots. Let's be really careful with it. Oh, shit. Didn't even see you. And that jams. Great. We're all in for the jams today. And we level up again. Uh, so I can take cannibal. Uh, you can eat human flesh, essentially. So they uh, humans always drop food rations, which is actually really useful. There's a lot of heals. Bookworm, you always carry a, a, scam man, a scam manual, a schematics manual for when bored, and you gain ten, 10 extra techno at each level up. Um, and then Blade Slinger, your finesse when attacking in melee, you have an extra 25% chance of scoring a critical hit. I like that, since I'm probably going to be using quite a bit of melee. Um, let's just pick up the stuff on the ground here. Some scud bullets and some more rags. 
Uh, I'm going to jump over to gear here and see if there's stuff that I can equip. Forearm rat, forearm spide, whatever that is, which gives me extra combat. And then scav rags, which is mi minus six agility, but plus three hardness. So we get extra hardness and a uh, subtract in agility. So we'll take more hits, but we take less damage. There's our exit. Let's just kill you and get some more XP. Slimed. An overhead sewage pipe dumps slimy, stinking sludge all over me. Uh, slime is attacking me. Random event there. But so far, I think the thing that stands out to me the most about this game is... Also, you, you can hold stuff down and just move quickly. Um, the thing that stands out the most to me about this game is just it's absolutely sludgy style. I, I It feels like I'm playing a Dope Throne album artwork, and that is a positive. You venture upon a dive hole, boasting a grinning gun runner, eager for credit. He wear His wares may not be top-notch, but a good gun may well save your miserable little life. Assuming, of course, it doesn't first backfire your face off. We can buy guns from the runner. I don't need no rusting guns. I got a knife. A frail old short awaits by the dome entrance, who explains he's lost a keepsake of sentimental value somewhere in the zone. He offers a tidy fistful of credits if you manage to find the treasure possession for him. All right, so we've got a quest. I've got two guns to unjam. And I'll reload as best as I can. We do definitely need some ammos for these, but I do have extra stuff in my inventory, so if we... Uh, if we, oh, that was quick. So that person wanted an heirloom. It was literally right there. So we just get 35 currency. <laughs> We're like taking 15 steps. Well, I mean, if the dome is scary, you don't want to enter the dome. I mean, I guess I can understand that. It seems to be like a hallway into the next kind of circular zone. These areas seem to be very big circular things. So kind of just run around the edges first. Just kind of explore a little bit. But I'm always going to take the time to check out traditional roguelikes that are popping up. Okay. Swap over the combat blade. And we missed, of course. We also missed, though, so that's a benefit. The kill. Get some XP. That's our XP bar down at the bottom. Of course, they also list our currency. Then there's... F Let's just run through the stats real quick, so considering I haven't done that yet. Fate affects the chances of whim, of whim to fail in your favor. Um... Uh, a measure of technological ability and craftsmanship. So that's our uh, our crafting skill, essentially. Mind, a measure of intellect, psychic, and learning speed. Strength, affects melee damage and item carry capacity. Hardness, affects how much damage you suffer when attacked. Agility, a measure of ability to dodge attacks. Ballistics, a measure of your gun shooting prowess. Combat, a measure of your fighting prowess and your health, which is obvious. Uh, death's embrace await. And remember, death's embrace awaits thee when all is gone. That's a really nice bit of writing. But I just, I love the look of this. It's like just, it's fucking phenomenal. Okay, there's a cleaver, which is the same as my combat blade. Again, I'm just going to keep taking what I can. But we are going to move. It's terminal. These refracting units analyze and scrap metallics and split spit out credits in return. Using my techno skills, I can scrap up to 45 credits worth of items or analyze their durability status. So I can scrap that. Left click to scrap item, right click to exit. Scrap the pistol ear. We'll keep the cleaver. Scrap the stubber. A lengthy error message briefly flashes on the terminal screen before promptly going blank. The scrapper is shut down. So our fleshy nightmare here uh, is no longer working for us. But yeah, I think that this game with bump attack and full keyboard control is going to would be something that I would be very intrigued to play a lot of and uh, and really kind of like dig deep into this world that this game inhabits. The only major hurdle I have aside from that would be the the font. I, I really want to see that improved a little bit. But aside from that, this is a 
very good, mushy style. Oh, jeez. For a game like this. Swap over melee. And I do really like the look. The style is certainly the selling slash strong part of this. Gunked. An overhead sewage pipe dumps slimy, fat, stinking sludge all over you. Fortunately, it's not attacking me. We are just gunked. We are running out of the super shotgun ammo, though. Let's reload that laser pistol. Just keep that combat blade out for a little bit. Maybe swap out over to sneak. Okay, well, there is one dude. A few of them, actually. Smack you. That's one down. We missed. Two down. Nope. There we go. You, however, you have a gun. Meaning, I need to wait for you to come to me. See, they hit hard. Swap over to the super shotty. God, I love that. It just reminds me of like, I don't know, old arcade games, I'd say. Free thinker, you're open-minded. So like, once again, all of our stats increase. Uh, your open-mindedness mindedness means when leveling up, you are given a skill chance from five skills instead of three. That's interesting. Your, your spiritly uh, scurrying means if you are running, then you can make an extra move that turn. And uh, you put everywhere you meet at ease. Anybody selling you services or items costs 33% less credits. Let's take free thinker because that seems helpful for the future. And uh, I'm also going to grab those thingies on the ground. I'm kind of injured currently. Let's see what we have for weapons. Because I need something that doesn't use shotgun <laughs> damage. Currently don't have anything, it looks like. So what I think... I'm going to do is I'm going to go to miscellaneous. We're going to eat a couple food rations, I think. Let's drink two boozy booze, two food rations. No way to turn. Stab this. Let it come to us. Did a lot of damage to that. Uh oh, looks like my cleaver broke. Looks like broke something. Yeah, it looks like it did. All right, so we're gonna throw uh, this cleaver in slot number one instead, which is the same damage. Little demons move quickly. They also die quickly. I also think that I was screwing something up back there that I need to fix. I think I was actually dropping those rations on the ground instead of eating them. Let's go back to where I was and just double check. Yeah, it looks like I was in fact doing that. Yep. I'm, I did mean to drop the, the laser pistols, but I didn't mean to <laughs> drop the gear. Um... There we go. There we go. Perfect. Go up to this. The fuck are you? Shoddy shells. That's what we need. Melee repair kit. Yeah. So we've got a crazy cannibal over here. Doesn't really do a ton of damage. Ouch. Perfect. Seems some poor sod managed to lose his pouch of valuable credits. Yoink. 
It's a bludgeon weapon. It's slow. I think we'll leave that. Can I step on something? All supply crates have been found on the map. It's interactable. This game is very much starving for a feature that Caves of Cut actually has. Which is... Um, you hold down alt and it highlights whether or not enemies are hostile or evil something like that but for this like just an overlay that just sig uh, signals interactable items would be extremely helpful because this game's style while gorgeous kind of makes it hard to tell what items are interactable and what aren't you tread the dimly lit steps down You venture into a small domey, into a domeway lit with curious stalls, brimming with all manner of secondhand knickknacks, and friendly sellers beckon you forward with promise of bargains galore. And who could possibly resist? We'll have a browse of their wares. Buy some heavy robes, a bent pipe, perhaps. Maybe some leg guards. That seems wise. Remedy pill. And a nail bomb for our device slot. Come back again anytime, you hear? Time to put these newish toys to good use. A frail old sort awaits you by the dome entrance who explains that he lost a keepsake of sentimental value somewhere in the zone. He offers you a tidy fistful of credits if you manage to find the treasured possession for him. I feel like that's one of the few events that the, oop, that the game currently has in it. Didn't get to make it very far, no, did I? I do need to reload that shotgun because we have two shots again. Wow. Doing real well on that missing option. So you can reload everything um, without actually equipping it, by the way. Um, let's jump over to gear, see what we have, because we actually probably have a lot of things I'm not equipping. Uh, boots. Helmet. Leg guards. Yeah, plenty of scav rags. Can I just drop a bunch of stuff? Absolutely just did. It is very easy to accidentally drop things. Okay, you. Do I want the hardness or do I want the combat? I think I just want, I think I want the combat. Drop that. Forearm spike gives plus two combat. Arm guards give hardness. I think we'll just, we'll, we'll go with that for right now. So heals seem to be something that are kind of tricky to come by. Um, I have a feeling that that uh, bodging slash crafting system is probably going to be something that takes, that happens very heavily the further you get in. Oh, also, let's see if we can make this work. Let's swap over to the super shotty and aim for this. Ah, oh, damn it, it jammed. Perfect. So there are exploding barrels that do have area of effect. Swap that over. Stab you. Ow! Jeez, that hurt. But, we did get the level up. Roadkill cook. Uh, you know the juiciest parts of beastly enemies, and you have a 33% chance of dropping a food ration. That's good. Um... Hmm. If an enemy spots you, yeah, we've seen that one before. Your exponential techno grifting talents, grafting talents that make any bodged items always have perfect durability. Ooh. When repairing any items fine with your fine craftsmanship, means that their condition improves more greatly. Um, I think we're gonna take Roadkill Cook. What'd you drop? Legend. We'll take it. I wonder if that's the keepsake. Yep, we got the heirloom. Okay, you're down. Let's unjam the shoddy. Hey, food rations. That's what we're talking about. Hmm. But as I've been saying, I think that the aesthetic of this game is one of its strongest... Ooh, shit, you have a gun. 
I think that the aesthetic of this game is one of the strongest things that it has going for it. Theme goes a really long way. And between the absolutely rad theme, cool music, I think there's a lot of potential here. Obviously, I haven't played the full game. This is only a demo. But I am highly anticipating this one and looking forward to more additions. Uh, I, I, I do think that there are some elements so far that I've seen that are a little bit on the light side, shall we say? I would love to be able to examine these enemies and know exactly what their stats are, just as an example. And the complete keyboard control, I think, would be a massive uh, boon to my enjoyment of this. This is actually kind of going south. Hold up. This little lizard guy is a pain. Gear miscellaneous. Hmm. I can also create a bunch of additional ammo, which I'm going to go with shoddy shells. The ammo resin that I had. Move a little south. Hello, you. Rip that shotgun shell. Perfect. Grab the extra heals. A dropped purse. It seems some poor... Sod managed to lose a pouch of valuable credits. Yoink. I do love those little events. I think there needs to be more variety. I've seen a lot of repeated events so far. I think we've seen several repeated events in this video. Ooh, a hunting rifle. A little peek. But I absolutely adore this aesthetic. And there's you. Drop any... Sometimes those guys drop, um, ammo, in my experience. All right. I'm going to repair my cleaver just out of concern that <laughs> my, my cleaver is going to break. Um, and then also there's device, which I never did equip. Did I just drop it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> so uh, I can equip it by hitting four. So I can throw that nail bomb. So I'd like to I'd like to throw it and show you what nail bombs look like when they go off. We got some areas left to explore. Oh, well, you're too close for the nail bomb, I think. These enemies do like to close their distances really quickly. Sharpshooter. Hmm. You devour your meal trimmings to every last crumb. Food rations provide double a health boost. Mm. Considering we've already got that perk that gives us the four to six health on the ground every time. Mm. Seems valid. Eight health. Twelve health. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Didn't actually mean to use that last bit, but there you go. You, we can use the the bomb on. So when you select your device, you then throw it on. Oh, it looks like it collided with the chest halfway through. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> well, good thing we still got the super shoddy. Let's just wait a few turns until this thing comes around the corner. And bap. Dodged. And it looks like our shoddy just broke. Well, let's double check that. Yep, that is indeed the case. So what I think we're going to do is we can make a brutal axe, a bludgeon and a cleaver. Don't you just love it when your enemies give you the time to just, I'm just going to quickly like tape this shit together and make a brutal axe, which is a better melee weapon than the cleaver we were using previously. He did get to attack us once in that time and then bang. Ouch. We won due to fate. Our fate roll saved us there. We killed the scav. I can pick up its rags. I can take the stub bullets, which is what I'm going to take. But at what cost? More stub bullets. Ooh. Laser, bla laser blaster rifle. That is a um, craftable item. Laser blaster rifle. Let's uh, put that on three. 
We're going to put the other nail bomb that we have. Let's check this big open room. A little ominous. Ooh, it appears to be locked. Unless I'm mistaken. Containment lab. A research laboratory of some kind sealed shut due to contamination breach. An easy crack could open it. But there may be medical supplies inside. What else awaits you? Hack the lo hack locking system. Your hack attempt was sublime. And now to see what science has for us. Well, here's a good opportunity for our nail bomb. Didn't do any damage to me, thankfully. Got one ration. Kind of wish I had the pistol equipped. Swap over to the... I now have the plague. Which means I'm poisoned, I think. That brutal axe is quite nice. So there is a very slight flickering thing. We do have the remedy pill. Since we are affected with the plague, let's see what we have. Uh, heals some health over time. Cures all ailments, ex including poison. Let's see. Huff puff. I'm carrying too much. <laughs> uh, of course I am. I'm always carrying too much. Um, gear. Let's throw down some of that stuff that we can. There we go. We're almost under the weight that we need to be at. No, we definitely are. And then we can head out, I think. Taking us down to the next floor. Exiting this sector. Various wanted posters are hitched to the zone entrance with a promise of a tidy bounty. It might be a shot at some easy extra credits as I mosey my way through the filth holes. Contract Rack Pack Pests. Contract Cannibal Clan. I have my own contract. Let's go after the Cannibal Clan. Then we enter into the new zone. Cannibal Clan. The contract says Ruthless Family of Cannibals may have made home in this sector. Perhaps I may have a second thoughts if I begin to smell roasted organ innards, unless I desire to star, to star in the ch next chainsaw massacre. Color palette swap, new zone begin. So I think this is probably the best little demo I could give for dead zone, for dead zoned, at least, for what is available here currently. Pew. Prepare your ammo barrel and it loads smoothly. Precision reloading guns no longer takes a turn. Let's go with that, because screw turns being taken. Let's wait one turn. We'll take their bludgeon. But I think we're going to exit to this title screen from here. So that is Dead Zoned. Seriously, like, check this thing out. It's actually really cool. Uh, and if you are like me and you enjoy traditional roguelikes, this is definitely one to watch. Demo's free and available on Steam, and I will absolutely be playing the full game upon release. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos like it of games that you may or may not have heard of, go over to my YouTube channel, and there is going to be a long list of games that may interest you. If you want to see my face while I play video games on the internet, go to twitch.tv slash blindirl to watch me play Dwarf Fortress and other such things. There's also more Dwarf Fortress on my YouTube channel than you could reasonably watch in a lifetime. If you want to support this video directly, super thanks is active on this channel, or go over to my Patreon where you can, you know, fund me directly and get your names and credits and things and get some perks on my streams. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.